What's up beautiful people, it's your boy Gideo and I'm back again with a new video. Today we're going to be checking out a video by Professor Jordan Peterson. This one is titled, Why Hitler Bathed Even More Than You Think. I'm excited, I'm ready, I'm interested to see this one, so without wasting your time, let's get to it. You think about a totalitarian state, you think about the Nazis and their goose stepping. And what's happening is that every single person in the military becomes an identical unit, right? A uni they're all uniform and they're all in some sense, imitating the, the dictator in, in an absolutely perfect way. And so the dictator wants to impose strict uniformity on the entire population. That's order. Order. And one of the things we've discovered that's really interesting is that um, disgust sensitivity is associated with orderliness. And, and that's associated with conscientiousness. And one of the things about Hitler was that he was very disgust sensitive. And a lot of his hatred for non-Aryans. So sensitive. imagine inside the Aryan box, it was all uniform. Outside, it was all parasites and predators. And so, and that was a manifestation of disgust, not of fear. It's a whole different thing. And if you read Hitler's table talk, which is a collection of his spontaneous dinner speeches from 1939 to 1942, it's a very interesting book. You see that... His metaphor for the Aryan race was a body, a pure body, unassaulted by parasites or predators, and that he was trying to er erect a border around it to keep all of that away. So it's an immunological disgust-like metaphor. And there's some recent work that was published in PLOS One about three years ago, showing that brilliant study, should have got much more attention, showing that if you went around and, and, and sampled political attitudes in different countries, or even within the same country, what you found was that the higher the prevalence of infectious diseases, hmm. the higher the probability of totalitarian political attitudes at the local level. And you can imagine, well, what happens if there's infectious diseases is you want to put borders around everything. You don't want free movement between ideas or people because that's partly how the disease spreads. Spread, You're yeah. going to have much more strict sexual rules, for example, because that's a great way for diseases to be transmitted. And before Hitler went on his rampage against the non aryan I feel like we should have much more strict, strict sexual rules today because we have a lot of diseases, but the sexual rules are not strict, you know? Instead, we're putting in consents where it's not really well organized, you know? Instead of consent, we should be morally aware more. I feel like that applies today too. He cleaned up all the factories. Like he went in there and fumigated them. It was part of the law. And he went on a public health campaign to get rid of tuberculosis and he got rid of the bugs in the factories as well. And he used Zyklon B. That's an insecticide and that's the gas that he used in the gas chambers eventually. So first it was the bugs in the rats and then it was people who were, then it was euthanasia. That was the next move and forced euthanasia. And the, the rationale for that was compassion, by the way, just so you all know. It's, it's, it's merciful to put these people who are burdensome to themselves and their families and the state who are living second rate lives. It's merciful to euthanize them. And that was a huge campaign in Germany. It was after that, that the, the more racial. He did that out of mercy. Isn't that psychopathic? <laughs> I don't know, man. But guys, let me know what you think. Yeah, he was merciful to do that. Was it really like. Were they really in pain like that? Because this also brings us back to the case of, um, I think Canada's new medical health um, law they are putting, which is assisted suicide. It brings us back to the same discussion. If, if it was merciful to kill the people because they were ill, is it okay for... Anyways, it's a whole discussion. We'll talk later. Purifications began. And so... That's the disgust thing. That's unbelievably important. It's, it's, it's because lots of times people think that conservatives are more anxiety sensitive than liberals. And that's why they're closed in terms of their ideas. But that doesn't look right. First of all, conservatives are less neurotic than liberals, although the effect isn't that big. So it doesn't look, and they actually are, they're, they score higher in, in measures of well-being. The most unhappy people are liberal men, by the way. So... <laughs> Shots fired. The most unhappy people are liberal men. <laughs> but, you know, people are often accused, if they're conservative, of being fearful, and that's why they, you know, suppress other people's viewpoints. But that doesn't look right. It's low openness and high orderliness, and that looks like it's associated with disgust, and that looks like it's associated with something called the extended immune system, which is the proclivity of people to 
to keep themselves away from potential sources of contamination. It's mm -hmm. really terrifying because one of the things people often said about Germany was that, you know, it was a very civilized country and yet it descended into barbarity. But conscientiousness is a very good predictor of long-term success. And so you could say, well, conscientious societies are more civilized, but they're also more orderly. And that makes them more disgust sensitive. And so what it might have easily, might have easily been. So we can associate orderliness with being disgust sensitive. Can we say that? So if you wake up in the morning and you dress your bed, try to be orderly, iron your clothes, it also means you're disgust sensitive because you don't want your bed to be scattered. You don't want to be tattered. Can we associate both? Can we say they are synonymous? That's a, that's a question, right? In Germany was that it was an excess of civilization rather than its lack that produced exactly these consequences. Mm. And that's a far more frightening proposition and one that's, excess. I believe, much more likely to be true. Hitler bathed four times a day. And he was also an admirer of willpower, so he could stand like this for eight hours in the back of a car. And the thing about conscientious people mm. is they're very willpower oriented. And so if you're unfortunate enough to be sick, chronically, in the house of someone who's conscientious, especially if it's a mental illness, you're more likely to relapse because the conscientious person is going to be judgmental and they're going to say to you, if you're schizophrenic, they're going to say, well, if you just organize yourself and get up in the morning and try a little harder, you could overcome this. Which is a Sounds like most African parents are conscientious because <laughs> that's what they will tell you. <laughs> of course, true, except you can't because you're schizophrenic. Mm -hmm. And so the pressure put on you by the anger and the contempt is going to increase the probability that you'll relapse. So orderly people are very judgmental. And you know, orderliness is, a, is very highly associated with things like anorexia. And the anorexic is basically someone who's so disgust sensitive that they become unable to tolerate their own body. And they see it as a source of corruption and imperfection, which of course is exactly right. It is. And it's a very difficult thing to maintain order around. So... Jordan Peterson, he makes points and correlates points in a way that you would never imagine. But if you give him time, he's going to make sense at the end. <laughs> now, from what he said there, it almost feels like he's been able to convince me in a way that Hitler was not a psychopath. He was also human like you and I. <laughs> Basically, you know, because he's saying Hitler was disgust sensitive and it's not the fact that he was trying to be a horrible person, but he was trying to create kind of like a kind of like a separation between infection and uh, clean states, you know. So it was an excess of civilization that led Germany into the whole, like, yeah, honestly, I don't know if I totally agree with everything he said. I'm not a professional. I'm not a professor also. He might be, you know, very accurate on this, but I'm I'm not in the place to say if he's correct or not. But I I feel like some of the points he made were were valid, you know, were, I think they were valid. But you guys let me know. A lot of you might be professors or more intellectual than myself, so you can also teach me and share more reasons. But that was a good it was a good um learning moment it was a good learning moment let me know what you think about adolf hitler we're not here to glorify anybody in one of my videos i saw a comment where someone spoke about why are we trying to glorify adolf hitler i think it was a candace owens video we're totally not trying to do that we're just trying to learn and understand why certain things happen so if you're ready to discuss within the subject please talk to us if you just want to criticize and smoke everybody for no reason you might as well stay away from the comment section. That being said, it's the end of this video. Don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe if you're new to the channel. And I'll see you on the next one. Have a wonderful day. Peace.